Hello and welcome. The Criterium du Dauphiné is starting up and at Flow Bikes, Ian and I have done something which we have been avoiding for a very long time. We have brought in somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Alex Stita, welcome to Flow Bikes. Well, thanks. Thanks, Michael. I, I, well, I can pretend to know what I'm talking about too, I guess, too, just like you guys. Uh, I, I would say that uh, you do know. And so for some clarification, we are going to be bringing in Alex Stita, a former yellow jersey wearer of the Tour de France, to the Flow Bikes uh, commentary and analysis team. He's going to be joining us every day after the Criterium du Dauphiné. We're going to do a show wrapping up the action. And Alex Stita, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your history in the sport and uh, your expertise, why we should be listening to you. All right, Michael, I, I guess I can go through a little bit of my Palmares, but, uh, you know, I started in 1977, believe it or not, as a junior in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, and uh, just, it, you know, the cycling bug bit me hard. Uh, I started to win some, some local races and I just, you know, it was like a drug. It just had to have more uh, and just grew from there. Um, uh, I won Tour of Ibiza in 79. Uh, Junior Worlds, uh, Greg LeMond beat me in the pursuit by that much. Um, and that was, uh, that was tough to take, but uh, uh, I went to Belgium on my own in 1981, uh, won some commerce races in, in Ghent and uh, learned what real bike racing was about. Uh, just, there was just so many cool things that, uh, you know, some stories there that I'd love to share at some point. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, world championships every year, mostly endurance track, pursuit, points race, uh, Madison, uh, Olympics in 84 on the track, and then uh, turn pro uh, for 86 with 7-Eleven. I was riding for the 7-Eleven amateur team in the early 80s, and then we all turned pro after the Olympics. Uh, and then, of course, my you know first first pro season in 86, uh, you know, the Tour of Sicily was in, it was in February, and it was freezing cold, everyone was, was dead, and I just couldn't believe that this was what it was like to be a pro cyclist. That was that was insane. But then, you know, Tour de France 86, well, th there's a, you know, the whole story there that you guys have put up, which is really cool, and you know, continued to race, uh, you know, Tour of Texas every year, one Tour of Texas a few times, uh, you know, based in Austin, your guys' hometown. Uh, and then, yeah, retired in 92 after, uh, you know, a, a great, great career and uh, really, really, you know, gratifying to have all of that time uh, as as a as a professional and an amateur, and uh, it, it really became you know part of me, and still is part of me. Well, Alex, we are really excited to have you joining us. And you mentioned this 1986 Tour de France, and what a story that was! It's something I didn't really know much about, but Ian and you talked. We created a little mini documentary about you know, your first professional season on 7-Eleven, putting yourself in the yellow jersey. W what a story. Uh, I I'm gonna just leave it right there for our audience. It's uh, on the homepage of Flow Bikes on our app. Go watch that, it'll take 11 minutes of your time and really cool bit of history. And it'll tell you even more about who we're going to be listening to, you know, during the Criterium du Dauphiné and then the Tour de France. Yeah, and if I could add something, Michael, I didn't really sort of give a, a reason why you know people should listen to me, but I, I'll put it this way: I know that I was never the strongest guy in in the peloton, and I always had to figure out a way to try to win or to try to put myself in a winning position. Let's say, and because I wasn't the strongest guy, I had to be really analytical and and figure out the best time to use my matches, and I think that gives me uh, a, a unique perspective and a lot of other guys in my position too you know there are lots of you know no one can be uh, egan bernal or chris Froome in, in his heyday uh and we have to we have to be careful how we use our energy and because of that i think i'm able to you know look at the bike races and provide a perspective that maybe some people um aren't looking for well Alex, I'm looking forward to this uh, perspective from another person who is definitely not the strongest person in the peloton. Uh, yeah, and everyone, please do join us starting tomorrow for our post-race show, uh, the Criterium du Dauphiné. Alex, we'll see you there.